In this video, we'll look at changing rates of change. Here is a flask that already has some water in it and a pitcher full of water. I'll play an animation showing the water being poured from the pitcher into the flask. As you watch the animation, think about the relationship between the height of water in the flask and the volume of water that is added to the flask. In particular, you'll need to determine whether the rate of change of height with respect to volume is constant, increasing, decreasing, both increasing and decreasing, or something else. I'll start the animation now. Many people would say that the rate is constant because the top of the water in the flask appeared to rise steadily. But that perspective is comparing the height of the water to the amount of time that has elapsed. Here, we want to compare changes in height with changes in volume. And it turns out that the height of the water in the flask changes at an increasing rate with respect to the volume of water that is added to the cup. Let's think about why this is. First, we'll zoom in so we can see the flask in a bit more detail. Next, I'll represent the height of the water in the flask. I'll use an oval to show the water that was in the flask before starting to pour. I'll represent the height of the water that was initially in the flask using a green arrow. And I'll represent the change in height of the water in the flask using a blue line. Next, I'll represent the volume of the water that gets added to the flask using a red arrow. Let's rewind this to the start of the pouring. Now I'll show this again. As the animation plays, think about how the height, the length of the blue bar, and the added volume, the length of the red arrow, are changing with respect to each other. I'll also add black bars to indicate the change in volume. So, on the bottom, the distance between the bars is showing the amount of change in volume. We can copy this length onto the height bar. Now, if we think about the amount of change in height, we can see that delta H is roughly 1 and 1 quarter times as large as delta V. Let's rewind the animation. And next, I'll add in the green arrow to show the initial amount of water in the flask. And I'll also add labels for delta V and delta H. Let's start the animation again, this time incorporating the black bars to show the amount of change in volume. At first, when the amount of change in volume, the distance between the black bars, is small, the amount of change in height, the length of the blue bar, was only about three-tenths as large as the amount of change in volume. Later, when the amount of change in volume is large, the amount of change in height was about 1.25 times as large as the amount of change in volume. This is what it means to have an increasing rate of change. In this scenario, we say that height varies at an increasing rate with respect to volume if, for successive uniform changes in volume, the corresponding changes in height increase. This might be a little complicated to sort out, so let's take a closer look. I'll add some lines to show the connection between the amounts of change in volume and the corresponding amounts of change in height. So let's think about the idea of uniform changes in volume. To do this, let's split the amount of change in volume into two equal-sized parts. So now there are two amounts of change in volume that are equal to each other. These are successive uniform changes in volume. Next, to make things a little easier to see, let's rotate the height bar. Now it's a little easier to see how the relationship between volume and height is changing. For the first amount of change in volume, the amount of change in height is about three quarters as large as the amount of change in volume. For the second fixed amount of change in volume, the amount of change in height is roughly twice as large as the amount of change in volume. So for these two successive uniform changes in volume, the corresponding changes in height are increasing. Let's see what would happen if we split the added volume into five sections. Now we've split the amount of change in volume into five uniform segments. And you can see that for the first amount of change in volume, the corresponding amount of change in height is small. And for successive uniform changes in volume, the corresponding changes in height increase. So this is what it means to have an increasing rate of change.
For successive uniform changes in volume, the corresponding changes in height increase.